All right guys, BLM here, back with a new video in this video. To follow the tradition of how I've run this channel up to this point, where after I do a season retrospective, I also eventually do a player ranking. Here we're going to be doing a player ranking for Survivor UK Panama, which might be the most pointless player ranking I will ever do in my entire life. But here we'll be ranking all 12 players from Survivor UK Panama, and I mean, hopefully this will be short. We'll see. Again, this is an assessment of how they played on this individual season, not how I look at them as players in the grand scheme of things, but come on, it's Survivor UK Panama. So with that said, we have 12 players to be ranking here. Let's start off with number 12. The worst player on the cast, in my opinion, is Sarah, the first boot. Now, to be honest, I do think there's another player on this cast that played more actively bad than Sarah did. But I feel like Sarah just really had no shot on this season. I mean, she is someone that right from the get-go, she just instantly didn't fit in on the show. I mean, she clearly was having a tough time with the conditions, clearly was the weakest person on her tribe, and really was just a clear person to go. There really wasn't much suspense up until the vote. Even during the immunity challenge, they kind of just like pushed her away so that the people who were actually competent could actually do the challenge without her. Now, I will say that technically she shouldn't have been voted out because again they only lost the immunity challenge on a technicality which was something out of her control but i mean she still was the first person to be taken out of her tribe there and really had no potential moving forward so she does land here at number 12 at number 11 the person who i talked about earlier as probably the person that played the most actively bad and at 11 we do have tayfun who i love tayfun as a character and i do feel like he's a player that was a bit ahead of his time but just played so terribly in comparison to this cast. Again, he was the first boot from his tribe and really had no potential moving forward. I think this just simply was not the cast for him. I don't see anyone on this cast that would have been willing to work with him. As again, that just doesn't fit this cast. Like his more strategic outlook on the game where we do see him try to put together an alliance with the people on the minority with him trying to get the women together to take out Alistair and Dave, though it obviously doesn't end up working. But again, like I do think he shows level of strategy that just people weren't playing with on this season. But I mean, again, like he completely fails at blending in with the people on his tribe. Again, it's very clear that he just didn't fit on this cast. And through that and him also being looked at as a liability through his numerous mistakes throughout his stay there, like losing the tribe there, Machete, and him just kind of going off on his own. Like, there's just very little positive to say about him outside of the fact that, again, I do think he has a decent strategic mind, and that's enough for him to land here at number 11. Now at number 10, moving on to a player that I do think had a level of potential here. Again, another one of the more strategically adept players, it seems like. It's just that he had a poor read on the layout of the game and also just didn't blend in nearly as well and that is lee now lee again was the second boo of the season got taken out at the second opportunity that he had but i feel like lee also had a decent strategic mind where he did see that john and johnny were getting together and he then tries to pull in Susanna into his alliance and supposedly had been working on even sarah before she went home to potentially get her on his side and like it seems like he was trying to build a counter alliance to John and Johnny who do end up running the game. The problem is that again, like he just didn't have the numbers on this tribe. Again, he tries to get Susanna, but does it too late to where she's already more aligned with Johnny by that point. And even then like Susanna says that she doesn't bond nearly as well with Lee as she does with Johnny. And through that, he eventually becomes looked at as the biggest threat on the tribe where John is worried that Lee's going to take him out. So they end up taking out Lee over Bridget. Despite Lee being, again, a pretty physical guy and someone that they should have needed in challenges. So I think Lee is someone that had an okay mind for the game, but I just think socially he just wasn't all there. Again, he let Sarah go. He never really had Susanna and really didn't have much of a path moving forward. So because of that, he does end up landing here at number 10. Now, number nine, the final pre-merge boot here, going through all of them in a row. At number nine, we do have Mita, who... I actually liked quite a bit on the rewatch who was actually a more active player on the rewatch than I expected where I remember her being very passive in the game and like essentially wanting to quit and I thought that was it but she actually seemed to be pretty well liked on the tribe 
I mean, yeah, she was probably still on the bottom coming into this final five round. It was either her or Drew. And with her being the weaker physical competitor, she was probably still in danger no matter what. But she did seem to be well-liked. She did seem to blend in well with this tribe. Now, I do wish she would have flipped the game and side with Tayfon and take control of her tribe and not want to quit the game and all these other things. But I do think just from a basic social standpoint, I think she was fine. And we do see her like create this like plot to trick the other team in terms of the gross food eating competition that ends up working outside of the fact that she loses the gross food eating portion of it but and like she did create that i mean she does seem to have a decent amount of strategic ability it's just that she seemed to just give up largely due to her not being good in the conditions but i do feel like if she were more willing to play like i could see a level of potential there but she didn't play and because that can't really assess her much higher than number nine here. Now, number eight, again, everyone here has made the merge. That number eight, we do have the person who, again, in my opinion, played the worst out of those people, and that is Bridget, who did come in fourth place, but I feel like made so many mistakes along the way. Now, I do think early on, I was actually kind of impressed by Bridget to where, despite her being the older and perceived weakest member of the tribe outside of Sarah, she does get saved over Lee, which I do think you can partially credit to Lee overplaying a bit, but also I think you should credit also Bridget for being able to build enough of a bond with Johnny and John to where they want to keep her around. We get to the merge where really the entire game is dictated by the tiebreaker challenge, where she wins the tiebreaker challenge for her tribe, they get rid of Helen, and that allows her tribe to hold the numbers. But even despite that, there are so many times where the people on her tribe consider taking her out along the way just because she's such a terrible social player to where she's very argumentative of people she is pretty domineering once she gets socially acclimated like she really isn't that great of a player really and largely gets dragged to the end i don't think she wins a jury vote unless it's against Susanna. but even then i don't know if she wins like for me bridget is just someone that really just got dragged through the game with doing very little actually right along the way and most of the things that she does right are in the pre-merge where everything from the post-merge on is pretty bad and her never really having a shot at making it anywhere close to the end by the end of it unless she were to win out so really for me Bridget ends up landing here at number eight now number seven and really this one's gonna be kind of tough because really the next three players that we're gonna be talking about we're all like kind of in the same ballpark all Spoiler from the same starting tribe that did get pagonged. But definitely the order was a bit up for grabs. At number seven, though, I did decide to go with Drew. Now, this was tough because Drew is someone that did obviously make it further than the next two people we're going to be talking about. And it's someone that is probably more well-rounded than at least one of the next players we're going to be talking about. Where, again, like I think she is good physically. She won a decent amount of challenges. And she's seemingly good socially with most people. I mean, she did end up acting pretty cold towards Susanna and she was in a feud with Bridget for a lot of the post merge but for the most part I mean she does a very good job at bonding with the people on her original tribe and then and especially with Johnny later on in the season that could have potentially brought her further into the game where Johnny talks about how like if it was his personal choice he would have gotten rid of Bridget and Susanna before Drew and I think that is indicative of good social play the problem for me is two things. One is that she was clearly on the bottom of her original tribe, where on their original tribe, the core alliance seemed to be Dave, Alistair, and Helen, with Drew at the bottom of that. So I do think if they went to another tribal, she was probably going home. And I do think if that alliance had gotten to the final four, she was probably getting voted out. The other thing, though, is the fact that she wanted to quit. And the fact that she actively sabotaged her own game so that they would vote her out. I think that's the most indicative thing, where... She threatens the tribe in order to try to get herself voted out, is unsuccessful in that, and also ends up leaking a whole bunch of information along the way. Like, it really is just a messy situation that, because of that, I just found it hard to believe that she would ever get to the end and actually win the game. So I did end up landing here at number seven. Now at number six, someone within that alliance, though the earliest boot of that grouping, and here we do have Helen, who was the merge boot. But again, like, went out the merge due to some weird circumstances. Again, it's weird where both tribes end up agreeing to send their weakest person into the tiebreaker, and Helen was perceived to be the weakest. 
So they put Helen versus Bridget. Helen loses the survival quiz that ends up dictating the entire game. Again, a weird circumstance of her going home. However, I think before that, she was actually positioned decently well. Where again, like the core alliance seemed to be Alistair, Helen, and Dave. With Alistair in the middle of that. Where Alistair had a closer relationship to Dave. Alistair had a closer relationship to Helen. Now, I do think at the end of the day, Alistair does pick Dave over Helen. But Helen definitely would have been able to get to three is more than I could say about Drew. Then again, I feel like her winning chances are probably pretty low. Again, she's really young. I find it hard to believe that they would reward her the win over Dave in particular. But even Alistair, I think there was at least a level of respect for him out there. Where Helen did seem to be well-liked. Like even Johnny and John talk about how they like Helen. But I doubt it would be enough to win her the game. But again, like in comparison to Drew, who we just went through. I, I do think... Helen was better insulated throughout a lot more of the game than Drew was and also seemed to be more playable socially. So because that Helen lands here at number six at number five, the penultimate member of the North Island tribe. And here we do have Alistair, who was a tough one to gauge here. I consider putting him higher because, again, as I said earlier, like he is technically in the middle of that final three that probably would have gotten to the end had the North tribe gotten the majority after the merge. And he probably does win against Helen, but I think he would have taken Dave to the end to where I think Dave could easily beat him at the end. So that's something I struggle with. Also, I mean, like Alistair to me is really a product of his time. Like, I don't think he is someone that would do particularly well in any given Survivor scenario. But like considering this is Survivor UK Panama, I feel like he is able to be the leader of his tribe. I mean, like, again, in many ways, he reminds me of Hunter Ellis from Survivor Marquesas. And I do look at them as kind of similar players. Though, to be honest, I think Alistair might be even worse, considering I think Alistair might be worse socially. Where, even though Alistair, again, had a good relationship with, like, Dave and Helen, he seemed to have a good relationship with Drew, he seemed to have a good relationship with John and Johnny for most of the game, he seemed to get on people's nerves by the end of the game. Mind you, a lot of that is more gameplay based where during his final round, he does act pretty selfishly and tries to conserve his energy for challenges and all that sort of stuff, but still is not great social play. But then again, he was at the point where he needed to win out anyway. But I do think that sort of play though makes me question a bit on how he would perform at the end against a jury. Again, like I, I think he probably loses against Dave. Which is not ideal considering I'm pretty sure that's who we wanted to go to the end against. And while he probably has a bigger chance at beating like a Drew or a Helen, I don't even think it's guaranteed in that position considering how he was perceived by the end of his run. So, so again, not a great end to his game. I mean, his start is fine. Again, he is pretty much the leader of his tribe and takes control pretty early on, is in the center of the tribe. But I feel like a player like him, especially at this point in Survivor, is always going to have that. So I don't think it's really that indicative of him as a player, but really overall, he's just a massive mixed bag with probably more negatives than positive, but he still had a chance at winning the game. So that's enough for him to land here at number five. At number four, we have the first of the big three of the season in my eyes, the final three, and that is Susanna, who I actually think is an okay player in the grand scheme of things. I mean, she doesn't win the game here, obviously. She gets to the end, loses a jury vote against Johnny, doesn't get a single vote, and actively put herself in a position to where she goes to final three against both John and Johnny, two people who absolutely wiped the floor with her, while she could have gone to the end against like a Bridget and possibly had won. But you could tell that she was thinking about it at points. Like there is a point at the final five where she is approached to flip and Again, like I feel like she knew what she was doing, that she pretty much had no chance at winning. Now, I do think she got a bad read on Johnny to where she did truly believe that Johnny was going to take her to two and didn't think that John and Johnny had an alliance for some reason. That's a bad read, but I do feel like she probably knew that she was going to lose the game at the end, though. And to be honest, I don't know how Susanna really wins this season, largely because I feel like so much of just the natural perception of Susanna is pretty negative from most of the tribe i mean you see her visit the north island tribe and like right away all the women on that tribe instantly hate her and for seemingly no reason i mean like they say oh she's being fake and stuff it's like i feel like that's what almost anyone would do is like act excited when you're at someone else's camp and stuff it's like it's, what are you gonna do like mope around like i, I don't fully get why exactly they hated her outside of the fact that again she comes off as 
pretty intellectual, pretty posh, as they would say, and I think comes off as rich, which she did come from a rich upbringing, but I don't think her in particular is that that rich, but... And they did seem to use that against her in the game. And I don't think she really had much of a chance. Now, again, like I do think she is a competent player. Again, I do think strategically, if she were willing to play the game optimally, I, I do think she could have been able to navigate around the game a bit better. And we do see early on that Lee tries to make an alliance with her. And I do think if she had taken that path over the John and Johnny path, she definitely could have done a lot of damage on this season. But because this is an old school season of the show and her just naturally getting along with John and Johnny a lot better, like, again, it was never really going to happen. But I do look at her as a competent enough player and she does land here at number four. Now, at number three, the top player from the North Tribe is Dave, I guess. Not because I think Dave is actually that good of a player, but he just seemed to be very well liked out there. Like, I think he's a major example of the difference between the game they played in this season and them as a player, because I think in the grand scheme of things, Dave as a player is pretty mediocre. Like I think he is the type of player that only excels in an old school season like this, but on this old school season, he was very well liked and he would have won the game if he got to the end where it seems like all of the South tribe love Dave in particular, John and Johnny to where Johnny himself says that he would have taken Dave the final three. If he was voting on how he actually felt over old tribal lines and again i think that's very indicative of how good dave was at bonding with this cast where even on his original tribe again he is in a final two with alistair and is part of the core power structure along with helen to where like he probably gets the three if his tribe gets majority and if him or alistair win final immunity which is probably the most likely outcome despite the fact that final immunity ended up being a complete joke but he had better odds of getting to the end and again against alistair i think dave had more respect by the end of the game so again, like he is someone that like his game here is pretty strong to where he essentially had a 50-50 chance at the merge of all but winning the game and another 50-50% chance of being the most liked out of the North Tribe to where there's at least a semblance of a chance of him squeaking his way to the end and winning. I mean, we do even see him approach Susanna and Bridget about flipping the game on John and Johnny. And again, like he at least tried. I mean, that's something at least. So again, I, I don't think he's a great player in the grand scheme of things, but for this season, he almost won, really. So he is here at number three. Now number two. All right, top two here. Obviously, I mean, come on. We know who it is, right? If you've watched this season. But at number two, we do have the final juror. We have John, who before this rewatch, I always struggled on who I thought was better between John and Johnny, because I think John is the more active player. Johnny is the more passive player. I think now when rewatching season, I think to me, it's pretty clear that Johnny is number one and John here is number two. And the large reason for that is even though Johnny is very passive in the game, I mean, Johnny does get pretty much everything he wants and is put in a pretty optimal position kind of accidentally, but it still happens. While John just wasn't as well insulated within the game as Johnny was, where John definitely has some danger spots in his game. I mean, first off, if they didn't make that deal at the merge, I mean, John was the initial target from the opposition. Like John in general just seemed to be a bigger target throughout the course of the game, where even back to the original try where Lee wanted to flip the game on John and Johnny, John was his initial target. And that's why Sarah ends up voting for John there. But then later into the game, again, like he does get to the end with him, Johnny and Susanna, but like he gets to the end with Susanna, someone who isn't going to take him to the end. So I do think his positioning definitely needed a lot of work there. Not saying he played poorly because again, like at the end of the day, like these two players played the best by a lot on this season. It's not really close, but then again, like largely that was dictated by how the merge vote went and by the tiebreaker challenge, which is completely out of their hands. But if that didn't happen, John was probably going to be picked off next. But really, again, like that's a fault of everyone on this season, more so than just specifically on John. Again, John played an extremely dominant game. I would say John is the most active player on this cast. It's just that I feel like he was a bit misguided in how he controlled the game, where again, like Johnny just had so many more relationships than John. But even then, he was going to take Johnny to the end to where he probably loses against Johnny. So despite him playing a pretty dominant game here, probably a more aggressive game than the next person we'll be talking about, he does land here at number two. And at number one, again, number one is Johnny, the winner of the season, who I think played an incredible social game on this season. Like He is such a likable guy that pretty much everyone 
on the season. Really, really liked him. Again, he won an unanimous vote. His entire Final Four alliance was all taking him to the end. Bridget wanted to take him to the end. John was taking him to the end. Susanna was taking him to the end. Now, I do fault him a bit for wanting to take John to the end, who was someone that was the hardest beat of the three. But then again, like, I still think he beats John at the end. He also did a good job at bonding with people like a Drew and Alistair and again like just overall was very good socially on this season he's also good enough physically where he did win some immunity challenges but i do massively question his strategic ability in the game again it was john that was a lot more aggressive in the game strategically i think john was the one creating plans while johnny kind of just sat back and focused on relationships and that's what got him through the game and credit to him but i feel like so much of that was so luck dependent on these other players not doing what was in their best interest and him just kind of hoping that that was the case more so than him actually trying to make that the case and again like even his social relationships it's not like that was a really active thing either i just think he is a social and likable guy like i don't think he was playing anyone like or manipulating anyone to think he was anything other than what he really was to a degree i mean i guess with bridget and with Susanna, i mean they both did think that they were closer to him than what they really were but again i don't feel like that came from him trying to play the game i feel like it was more so that he's nice to everyone to their faces and then he's probably talking bad about them behind their backs specifically to john who is the person he was truly loyal to the entire time he did a pretty good job at threat management to where i do feel like john was the much bigger target in the game than he was but then again it wouldn't have mattered anyway because really the entire game was dictated by how the merge tribal went and how the tiebreaker played out which was completely out of his hands as i do feel like if the north tribe had gotten the majority they would have picked off the south tribe just as the south tribe did to them so yeah he's definitely not a flawless player but i mean against the field that we have here i mean he is the best player of the bunch the best socially, good enough physically, mediocre strategically, but it didn't really matter on this season. And he wins unanimously at the end. Had almost everyone wanting to take him to the end. I mean, he does land here at number one. There we go. I mean, that is my player ranking for Survivor UK Panama, which obviously everyone is uh, excited to hear my thoughts on. So that's out of the way. Again, I will be continuing doing this for future Survivor and Big Brother anniversaries down the road. So stay tuned for those and other more normal content that you would expect from this channel. But for now, thank you for watching.